Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Joshua chapter six, verse three, Hosea chapter seven, verse two, and Joshua chapter three, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for another scripture and word that helps us have understanding of these last hours and these last days. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you so much for guiding us and and showing us when to move and when not to move. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Joshua chapter six, verse three. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus, you shall do for six days. All right, and this is just letting us know that there is preliminary steps before the entering of um, the first steps of promised land, of the first city of taking the promised land. <clears throat> and so um, they are walking around the city, right? They're they are waiting, they are going through the motions and they're doing as God told them to do. And you know, it was not instantaneous. It did not happen on the first day. It did not happen on the second day or the third day or the fourth day or the fifth day or the sixth day, right? It was like the seventh day that the um, walls came down. And so um, the thing is, you know, we we have to go through it, right? We have to not know what's going on and still do it, right? We have to trust in the words of the Lord and keep marching forward, right? Getting up every day, going through the motions, brushing your teeth, putting on your clothes, putting on your sandals, walking around in silence, right? And and you know that the return of the Lord is near. You know that God is, is about to do a new thing and you still have to go to work right? You still have to trust in him and fill up your gas with car, your car with gas. You still have to take care of your children and function, right? And so God is letting us know, just, just keep going, keep going around that city. You, the city to come is, is nigh. We're walking around. And I actually don't just think we're just walking around. We're even in the midst of the wall, right? And so um, we're about to enter in and we just have to be patient. We have to trust in God that that God is, is in control and that he is going to deliver us just like he said he would, amen? So here you have this group of people who are going around the city who are marching around the city and they are continuing going through the motions right they are doing the will of the father and and continuing on even though they, they've never seen any of this before they've never experienced or they don't have a book of reference right at least we have the bible we can flip through and say like oh look they marched around right so we they didn't have that they just did what joshua said right they had just seen a, a miracle you know with the the jordan river but but this was something totally different because there were enemies involved there were people watching them and chiding them and scoffing at them as they walked around in silence and so the second scripture that the lord gave me was hosea chapter 7 verse Two, but they do not consider that I remember all their evil. Now their deeds surround them. They are before my face. All right. And so in this chapter in Hosea, it's basically talking about the wrath of God being poured out on the people and their pride is still high. They are not calling out to God. They'll weep and cry about their situation, but they won't seek him. Right. They are, they are going um, in, in, in having a horrible lives and, and having a lot of wailing and moaning and just destruction coming upon them, right? The higher being made low, all of these things, but yet they still do not return to God, right? And so that is 
that is very important, right? Because we're in the last hours. God is trying to get as many people to come to him, to return to him as he can. And he's not going to force them, even with the situations that he provides to try to help bring them back to him. He's still not going to force them to come back to him. It's up to them. And so they are refusing repentance. And so, yeah, that is what the Lord was showing me was that, you know, you have a group who are obedient and you have a group who are, are, are stubborn, just like we were talking about the, the stubborn calf, right. Who does not want to, um, come into safety, but is, is pulling in the opposite direction. And so God is, is saying, Hey, they don't consider that. I remember all their evil. They don't realize that God um, it's, is in sovereign control over all things. And he remembers every single thing that they have done. He remembers all of their deeds, right? He says, now their deeds surround them. They are before my face. So God, God sees it all. There's nothing that's hidden from him. So it's their choice to turn away from that sin and turn towards him. And so um, the third scripture that the Lord gave me was Joshua chapter three, verse 12. Now, therefore, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, from each tribe, a man. And this is when they were crossing the Jordan. So this is a mention of a crossing over and a miracle occurring. And so God is letting us know that we need to uh, make sure that we are remembering what it is that he is bringing us out of. We are remembering um, all of the miracles that he has performed for us, right? Um, he, he is doing that for the people who are being obedient. He's doing that for the people that are crossing over with him. And he's wanting you to remember all the things that he's done, right? When you look back, your children will say, you know, well, what is this? Why is this? This is what the 12 men um, were to do. They were to get the stones from the area where the water was piled up as a heap and they were to make an altar. And so from there, um, the, the children will, will ask, well, why are these stones here? And they are to tell them because this is where God brought us through. This is a, the spot where the miracle occurred and, and, and tell them about their history. Right. And so God is letting us know, Hey, he's about to perform a great and mighty act. He's about to perform a, a miracle, Right. And to the likes of the fact that, you know, you are going to want to remember this. You're going to recount this moment. You're going to tell it to your children. You're going to, you know, they're going to experience it. Right. And so we need to be conscious of the fact that, you know, there are some out there that are refusing repentance, but we still have to go through our actions um of, of what the lord is telling us to do we have to keep marching we have to keep listening to those instructions we we have to remember where he's brought us from and the miracles that he has performed and and how faithful he is as a god you know just because we don't have a reference point for the rapture um i mean besides elijah and 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 individuals um or well noah is a good example of basically a similar situation but you know just because we don't have anything that says oh a bunch of people were raptured it doesn't mean that we are to ignore the word of the lord we must keep marching we must take instructions and keep marching around until god comes through he's going to give the the right time the right place and he's going to make that part happen but we need to be obedient in our part don't be caught up in pride don't um don't refuse to be humble, right? We need to humble ourselves and seek God's face. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for truth and holiness and what is right. We love you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. Heal us and heal our land, Lord God. Show us what to do. Show us how to put one foot in front of the other on a daily basis, Lord God, so that we can continue to follow you. 
We don't want to be seen as prideful or refusing to allow you to work in us, Lord God. Help us to be patient and do your will, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's gonna do just that, amen. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children, his peace. Take care.